What effect does butter compared to palm oil have on our cholesterol, specifically LDL and the size of LDL and oxidized LDL? This is the question of a new study that was published in Nutrients. And as I dug into this, it was sort of interesting what the results are of the study, but more interesting for me was sort of this whole concept of funding, who funds the study, what's the study look like, how do you get funding for the study? So I wanna talk about this study from two different perspectives. One is of course, what the study found and why that may or may not be pertinent to us as individuals and how we eat. But two, sort of the, the um, framework of nutritional research and some of the tricks you have to do and how we maybe should be looking at funding sources and interpretation of different nutritional research. So I'm Dr. Brett Stroh, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And like I said, this study was published in Nutrients and it's called The Effects of Palm Sterin Versus Butter in the Context of Low-Carbohydrate, High-Fat, and High-Carbohydrate, Low-Fat Diets on Circulating Lipids in a Controlled Feeding Study in Healthy Humans. Now, I was lucky enough to be able to interview Taryn Sapper. She's the nutritionist and dietitian who works with Dr. Jeff Volek at Ohio State and was involved um, in this study. So I got to get some of her perspective on it because... My first take of it was, well, I mean, this is interesting, but what does it really mean? So let's talk about some of the specifics first, and then we'll get into the general concepts of nutritional research. But the specifics are, it was a three-week trial, so short, 12 people in each group, so 24 total, relatively small cohort. The group self-selected into either a low-carb or high-carb, so self-selected. And then from there, it was randomized to either palm steering or butter as sort of their added fat to their diet. Now, first of all, palm stearin, not palm oil, right? If the most, I guess, commonly consumed type of palm is palm oil, not palm stearin, but they had to make it look like butter to make it, you know, able to be randomized. So they used palm stearin. Did that change things? I mean, it certainly changed a little bit of it, but hard to know if that was clinically useful. And then basically what they wanted to do was see what happens to cholesterol, the differences between if they're eating butter or palm sterin. And what they found was uh, the LDL went up on butter compared to palm sterin. So 116 versus 131, 131 with butter, 116 with palm sterin, which were both higher than the baseline, which was in the 90s. So it went up in both, just higher with the butter, but it was all the larger, less dense um, LDL particles. So, you know, within the cardiology community, there's some debate about whether that matters at all. I think it's very clear that you don't want the small, dense LDL particles. Those are much more highly correlated with heart disease, and the larger ones are much less likely correlated with heart disease. Now, you can argue whether it's correlated at all or just a little bit, but it's clearly less than the small particles. So if you're going to increase your particles, better to have them large than small. I think that's pretty clear. Um, so this, although they increased a little bit, they increased um, the large particles. Also, the oxidized particles increased a little bit. And What's interesting is these findings were more prominent on the low carb diet, but not the high carb diet. In a way that makes sense just because the volume of the butter and the palm stearate that they're getting um, is much higher, obviously, on the low carb high fat than on the, the high carb low fat. So I guess those are the key findings, but now the question is, does this matter? Clinically, does this matter? Um, you know, if you enjoy eating palm oil and it you can find it in an environmentally friendly way, which I guess is kind of challenging to do um, and in a way that sort of fits your diet and fits your uh, personal health and lifestyle and environmental preferences, then okay, you know, feel free to, to eat palm oil. And, um, but if you prefer butter, um, butter is easier to find, um, can be much more environmentally friendly than, than palm oil. Um, do you have to avoid it because of what happened to your cholesterol? I mean, obviously I can't answer that question for you. Only you can answer that question, but the key is putting things into perspective. What is the overall context of your diet? What does that small increase of the larger LDL mean for you as an individual? Um, you know, these are, these are questions that we can't answer in general, but I think that's one of the points of the study is that, okay, interesting finding, but we cannot generalize the results to everybody. Also, the difference in the high carb versus low carb, I think just has to do with the volume of, of um, butter or palm stearate that was given. Um, and it was a three-week study, right? So what's going to happen to the high carb group in three months or a year? What's going to happen to the low carb group three months or a year or even further? That's sort of the more interesting finding. So 
Uh, and the other interesting finding was there was really no change in triglycerides or HDL between the two groups. Now, so one caveat, again, it was only three weeks. So usually low carb diets are much better for triglycerides and HDL than high carb diets, but this was only three weeks. And these were healthy people at baseline, right? So that's clear. They did not have type two diabetes. They were not obese and trying to lose weight. So that's a very different scenario when you're talking low carb versus high carb. So these were healthy people at baseline. So maybe not unexpected to not see the biggest difference. Okay. But now, you know, a little bit of an underwhelming study in terms of um, what are the implications for individuals. But now the thing that really made a difference for me, this study was funded by the Malaysian Palm Oil Board. All right. So because my first question is, why do they use palm oil? Like, who cares about palm oil? Do people actually really use palm oil? That's my sort of personal bias, I guess. Like, does it maybe coconut oil? Okay, that's more prevalent than palm oil if you're looking for like a plant-based saturated fat. But now it makes sense because it was funded by, by the palm oil board. And here's what I found most interesting in talking to Taryn was she was very clear. Like, look, getting funding for nutritional research is hard. Right? Pharma companies aren't spending million, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars researching nutrition because it doesn't do them any good to do so. And that's where the majority of funding from studies come, come from. So otherwise you have to get NIH grants, which are really hard to do and take a long time and you know possible. But this is like the easy funding. This is the cherry picking of the funding. Um, groups that have a vested interest, they obviously had some idea, the Malaysian Palm Oil Board, my guess, these are my words, probably had some idea that the LDL was going to look better on palm oil than butter, so wanted someone to do the study to promote palm oil. Um, but here's like where Dr. Volick and his crew get a lot of credit, was it wasn't supposed to be a low-carb study, and this is what I love. Like, He's like, in a way, sort of working the system, right? Saying, okay, I'm going to take this funding because it's there and it's available, and they want me to study palm oil, but I'm going to make it into a low carb study too, just so I can get more low carb research. Because like I said, people aren't really funding, groups aren't really funding low carb research. So it was, it was Dr. Volek's way of sort of getting some low carb research in the back door, which I, th- I, I kind of find fascinating. First, I find it hor- horrifying that this is what we have to do to get, you know, somewhat decent low carb research. And even then it was a small study in only three weeks. It just shows how hard it really is. And, um, you know, David Ludwig, I think, is the other uh, researcher who really deserves a lot of um, credit for, for really forwarding good quality research in the low-carb community. And he's got his own ways of getting funding, but as Jeff Volek shows, sometimes you have to use the back door uh, to get funding, which I thought was so interesting. And it brings up the question, if something is funded by a clearly biased institution, does that mean you have to throw out the results? Well, no, it doesn't mean you have to throw out the results, but it certainly means you need to spend more time looking at how the trial was designed. What were the methods? Was it designed in a way that was clearly biased towards one outcome or the other? You know, maybe having only the three week trial was pretty biased towards showing the benefit uh, to palm oil. Maybe, you know, six months, it would be totally different. Um, I'd love to see that data. Uh, I don't know, that was, that's just a guess. But the same thing if something's, you know, um, funded by the meat industry or the egg industry or the dairy industry, or obviously if it's funded by any of these companies or, or people with strong biases towards plant-based nutrition, you just really have to look at the, at the methods to make sure it's not designed in a way that's clearly given advantage. Like, like some of the, um, the two week feeding studies looking at low carb, uh, versus high carb diets. I mean, that is clearly designed to benefit the high carb group in almost all circumstances because two weeks of a low carb diet really means nothing because there's that that transition period, right? So to me, that's a study that is designed to fail for low carb or designed to succeed for high carb. So that's what I want to pay attention to. So anyway, um, interesting study, more for like the implications uh, for scientific research and what it means. A little less interesting in terms of what it means for butter versus palm oil, um, but take take from it what you will. All right, I hope this was helpful, more of like a little exploration um, and sort of my interesting journey of, of how I went through this study. I hope that was helpful for you to see. Um, if you click a thumbs up and subscribe, uh, you'll make sure to get all the updates from us here in the future on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, everybody.